Welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. We are looking at our lines here in New Orleans and in Inglewood, and we are providing them with food, and we are providing them with passenger service between the two locations. Um, I'm looking at the Inglewood dock and New Orleans food consumption, and it looks like New Orleans would actually like quite a bit more food. Um, we have quite a few passengers who want to go back and forth between the two locations as well, but I think what we might do is double up the new the Inglewood food line. Now the ship can carry 70 technically, so let's see how many that the dock will hold for it before it overloads. And right now it says 44 and it's not overloaded. And we should see a... Alright, so our big issue right now with the food processing plant is the shipment, and that is mostly related to this ship. It is taking a long time for that ship to get it over to <clears throat> over to New Orleans in order for it to be offloaded to the New Orleans public that actually wants the food. So that is a bit of consideration that we need to take into account. We also have the food going to Inglewood. Inglewood is getting about two-thirds of what it wants, and we have the bottleneck being now no grain. So we have all of these trucks running back and forth and they are running pretty much non-stop but and they are carrying the maximum capacity but there's just not enough of them. Now that's a concern for us since this line is generating pretty good revenue and it's every seven seconds that we are dropping off another uh, load of grain. Do we have any vehicles that can carry more yet? And the answer is, I don't think so. Yeah, five is the most anything can carry at 16 miles an hour, which is what these are already. So we're kind of limited by that. And 60 miles an hour is also the limit of this road. So there's no <clears throat> impetus to try and improve that. All right. Uh, I think what we might try to do though is we might try to add maybe five more vehicles onto this. And see if that will maybe even get our rate, our frequency down from where we are to even lower. Part of the reason we're suffering is this two grain to one bread ratio, which always makes things a little bit tougher because you're stuck providing twice as much grain as you're going to get out of it from food. Now, have our ships... Nope, our ships have not quite yet re reached New Orleans, but they're getting close. Besides food, New Orleans also wants goods, fuel, and construction materials, none of which are really available down here. We do have a coal mine that would probably go up to the steel mill here and not over to here. Although, bringing it back up to the steel mill, probably not because then we'd have to cut straight through Inglewood in order to drop that off. And that would be uh, problematic from a noise perspective. Once we get, you know, billions of dollars <clears throat> or hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe we look into a tunnel. But I don't think that that's a very good use of our time or money right now. Speaking of time and money, our earnings are kind of dipping and have dipped since we uh, added these additional food trucks here, or our grain trucks, I should say. Our grain delivery is now every seven seconds, <clears throat> but even then, we have less than a half full capacity of grain. I'm not sure what we can do to try to increase that. And in fact, we may be bottlenecked right here in that, yeah, the loading time for these trucks is such that adding more trucks isn't even going to increase the productivity. What we may need to do, let's look at this farm. The farm is only shipping half. So what we might do instead is put in a second <clears throat> truck depot and then take some of the cars off of this line and put them on the other one with the same drop-off point over here 
Now, the difficulty with that is they won't blend into this nice even pattern like they do right now, but it should increase our productivity. So we're going to go ahead and try that and see if that fixes some of our production problems. Uh, we don't need a, I'm sorry, we don't need a left, we don't need a right platform, we only need a left platform because these cars are going to come in from that northbound road. <clears throat> And they're going to exit out the southbound road. So let's set up Inglewood Grain 2. <clears throat> and what we'll do is we'll take... Well, we have 35 vehicles, so we're going to take at least... 15 of them. Oh, I really hate that. Let's start with 10. Should have taken a bigger mix. Now I have 20 vehicles on each line. All right. I'm not entirely sure that has increased our production. but it was worth a shot. <clears throat> so, let's look at elsewhere on the map where we can make some progress. Miramar wanted food, and it was, I believe, the only thing, the only city up here that wanted food. No, I take that back. Miramar and Santa Ana want food. And there is a food pro processing plant right there and a bunch of farms I could feed it. Is there any food processing on this side of the map? There is for St. Paul. This is actually a significantly closer, <clears throat> a significantly shorter route. So, 
Um, our earnings are taking back up. That's a good sign. We have the ability, I believe, to still take out some loans. So let's go ahead and set up St. Paul for uh, food delivery. Mm, all right, let's set up our road. Yes, that's literally what I was just doing. St. Paul, which is going to be way over here. Actually, no, it's not. It's going to be right here. All right, so new line from here to here is going to be the St. Paul grain. New line, and I don't like it being in that terminal. We want it to be in terminal one new line from here to here is St. Paul food delivery and to build those we'll need a truck depot and we'll put it out here and we'll buy 10 of those for the grain line and we'll buy <clears throat> five of those for the food line. <clears throat> and good to see that our grain is already building up. Carrying nothing, you can turn around. You're carrying nothing, you can turn around. You're carrying nothing, you can turn around. Oh, I take it all of my vehicles are carrying nothing. They can all come back and pick something up before going into St. Paul. And we can actually double the number of vehicles on this line. And let's go back and take a look at our New Orleans food. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Still no stored, but our issue is not storage so much as it is shipment. We only have demand for 120 something right now. Inglewood actually is getting very close to max. New Orleans, not as much because it's taking the ship. Um, we do have another 59 already waiting and the ship is still returning. Oh, we have a full passenger ship. That's very interesting. <clears throat> so our passenger line should actually be running pretty profitable. Isn't it sort of is, and our so is our food line. Now, if we can transport more food down here, that might actually be the best thing we can do. Where do we want the food? Okay, so it's kind of mixed in down here. And it does get coverage. Tram is not profitable. Probably because it's such a long route with such disparate stops. And New Orleans is not that big of a city yet. Um, but it'll grow. It'll continue to grow. We have 75 food waiting, so we actually have more than one ship's worth. <clears throat> Englewood Tram suffers from that same issue of having a very long distance to take passengers. Mm. And that's a new bus that we might have access to. And I'm going to clone this vehicle because there's more bread, more food up here than there is space on that ship. That's another 45 passengers off. Oh, look at all these people coming out ready to take the tram. Should be 70. Nope, oh, 68 out of the 70. I think two, two, a couple of those people decided to go right back on the ship. That's kind of funny to me. Hmm. I wish we had faster ships, obviously. Wish we had faster everything, but that's kind of what you deal with when you start in 1909 or 1900. All right, so that's where we are down here. How are we doing up here? Plenty of grain sitting at this, at this station. Plenty being delivered. Not being moved very quickly. Let's get some more food delivery vehicles going in the same hall. I just feel like this food processing plant all the way to Santa Ana is a little too far to be reasonable right now. And we are losing money on our on our work. So let's get to the point where we are able to make some money and then we'll talk about expanding our production lines.
we're back to making money again, which is good. And we should be seeing quite a bit of additional growth here in St. Paul as we deliver more food. Mm. Unfortunately, we have to pass by all these residential buildings. What I may have you guys do is just hang a Yui. On your way back out of town. Yeah. That way we don't drive past all the residences. Just a few. <clears throat> so the delivery line is positive. The grain line very well should be positive given the <clears throat> distance that we're traveling and the volume that we're bringing. our first grain ship or food ship and there's our second one and that one was slightly more than halfway full which is a good start uh, for the first shipping now the question is can we deliver this stuff fast enough to get it off of the dock that is going to be the trick mm. I also don't like the fact that our trams which can do twice as much as our <clears throat> Our delivery vehicles are getting stuck. How bad are our emissions? Ah, pretty bad. This is all residential down this big main street. But we might be at the point where we have nothing we can do about it. And we need... We'll take the hit. No, no we won't. Um, let's see if there's another place I can put the food delivery or different you would think that with a four-lane road they would know better than to follow directly behind but they don't <clears throat> so I wonder if there is an alternative route right like right here they're stuck behind the tram is stuck behind the vehicle the cargo vehicle and that's not doing anybody any favors and they can't pass and that's like a private car catching them both let's add in a Passenger stop here. And maybe that will just help break up the, this traffic jam. Let the tram have an opportunity to stop, give the uh, cargo vehicle an opportunity to get out ahead of it. Why didn't you stop? Mm. Mm. We're losing some of the profitability on our ships. And the issue is it still doesn't think that we have enough demand. <clears throat> and we are getting close to the full meeting the full demand in New Orleans here. Okay. If that's the case, then how do we get these foods over to Lowell?
because I want to maximize this facility as much as possible. Um, connecting Lowell will also add a private vehicle route for our civilians and they will be able to take advantage of that to travel from one city to another. And I think what we may do is tie in right here. Ooh, half a million dollars, but I think it's worth it. And the other thing I need to do. So that should tie Inglewood over to Lowell by private vehicle. What I might also want to do is come up with a separate route that doesn't go through Inglewood to take goods or take the food to Lowell, even though it's significantly less efficient. And we'll still have them exiting this way, right? Because this is an entrance only. Well, this is technically in and out. So if they come in this way, because we'll tie in this road, I don't think they can turn right at the end of the, at the end of a platform. I think they have to turn left. So we'll come out this way. We'll let them come up to here, and then we'll run our road from here. All right. Kind of a silly road, but we'll do it. And thankfully, this allows us to do our drop right here into the... Um, industrial part I guess would be the way I would put it in the industrial part of the bowl. Alright, <clears throat> this is a long long route by truck but so be it. This will be Lowell food delivery and we're gonna need to buy some vehicles for it and I think we're gonna need he is the faster one, and I think we're going to need at least 10. And we'll see what happens. Make sure Lowell is on the right terminal, and it is. Mm. Alright, our 
are the Lowell trucks getting any food yet? No. Alright, factory, I gave you more consumers. Why are we not providing them with the food? Alright, that's one. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we need to expand this. Let's see if that helps. Mm. All right, let's see how many of these people have no food and therefore need to turn around. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, we have trucks that move. Yes, yes, yes. We don't have a whole lot of cash, but we have trucks that move. And so our grain line is getting upgraded. carry what we need but it carries seven and it carries them to 25 okay one gray line will start with that upgrade mm. I think we're gonna have to borrow the money to upgrade both grain lines because our trucks are getting delayed behind the other ones. So look at them go 25 miles an hour, full speed ahead. <clears throat> And now we have a lot of grain here.
<clears throat> curious how much one bread is going to make being delivered all the way to Lowell. Oh, jeez. We nearly hit that pedestrian. Wow. That is some expensive bread. So, we're going to go ahead and pause the game and leave the game here. Um, this has been another episode of Transport Fever 2 with Casualty Gaming. We finally have uh, the ability to, to start moving some dis some goods long distance with those new Benz trucks that go 25 miles an hour. And uh, we'll see if that helps improve our profitability. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.